Welcome to another video. In the same manner as we did last week, I want to put a strong emphasis on healing this time and that it is not more dangerous or difficult to accomplish in Final Fantasy XIV than taking up literally any other possible role, while in contrast gaining many benefits especially when comparing it to a DPS job. So like it is with tanking, there is not a single reason to not start as a passionate or not so passionate healer and keep the multiple assets of thousands of people alive, while always being responsible for a solid group's performance. First and foremost, I want to talk about a very important misconception that I always read in the comments of the multiple healer or tanking guides and videos on this channel. The healer didn't heal, so I died. I may not be able to highlight it enough, but please note that dying or staying alive is a task not only being given to the healer alone, there are multiple factors coming into play. First up, if people are constantly eating AoE mechanics or tanks are not using their cooldowns properly, there is literally nothing the healer can do to keep those people in game forever. Sooner or later, the stacking damage taken will eliminate them without any mercy. The only thing your local white mage, astrologian, scholar or prospective sage healer is able to do is stretch the amount of time that the victim is having, especially when a tank is supposed to use a certain mitigation tool and refuses to do exactly that. Here, people will easily blame the healer, while it's definitely the tank's fault, especially when the healer is concerned with surviving mechanics by himself or has to arrange a good preparation for the next incoming raid wide damage. On the other hand, if healers are constantly spamming their damage button instead of looking at their party's HP at all, they may have chosen the wrong role for playing Final Fantasy. So please, and for the sake of our queue times and the overall community atmosphere, be nice to your local healer and try to help out with every mitigation, utility or support feature your job has to offer. And if you secured that, nobody ran into mechanics and people are still dying, then it may be the right time to blame the healer. But please blame them politely. Politeness goes a long way and can help our community to grow and people to lose anxiety in nearly all aspects of this game. But on the opposite of the first topic, there's always the same misconception that I already mentioned in my 3 misconceptions about healers video. Keeping your party's HP at 100% all the time is a necessity. And that is definitely wrong, simply from the fact that you would easily just make all sorts of shields or healing over time effects become pointless. Especially when you have healed up your party members to 100% and still have a full heart duration running. Of course, you can always play things safe and go for a reasonable health pool on all party members, but apart from dungeons, you always have another healer at your side, so make use of the fact and like I always mention, communication is key, which is true for the healers even more. And when mentioning the dual healer setup, never let yourself be forced into the you have to heal all of this by yourself, I will focus on healing damage. Because it is simply nonsense, each and every healing job this game has to offer has access to a very efficient kit of healing spells and kinda inefficient spells and combining them into a perfect healing symphony while opening up space and time for each healer to also deal some damage is still the most optimal case. Yes, there may be situations where some groups split that up for an in-depth fine tuning and to avoid miscommunication and to not run into healing to be overused but as a rule of thumb. As long as you make use of your efficient spells, this will easily be enough for keeping the party alive and leaving the raid with a true victory, when they deal enough damage in any form of extreme savage or ultimate content of course. Which kinda leads us to another aspect where people are still doing a whole bunch of mistakes and the remedy is yet so simple again. Dealing damage does not cause you to become a worse healer, nay. Of course, you should avoid becoming the mindless glare mage that will cast glare as long as nobody seriously hurt, dead or the party wiped away completely. Because the best thing about dealing damage as a healer is the simplicity of the damage rotation. And as it stands now, each of them have access to one dot and one direct offensive cast, which means you have to apply the dot, reapply it when it runs off and otherwise cast that offensive spell and use your healing kit whenever needed in between, while using your utility and mechanical build up tools. Which means you can easily spam that one damage button and spend the whole rest of your brain capacity on analyzing or preparing the things to come and happening around you. So if there's any big raid wide damage coming up next, instead of running around in panic and thinking about which heal you should use next or mindlessly spamming a Wii heals when the damage has not even happened yet, you could prepare the situation in your head while continuing to cast your offensive spell. With the white mage ace example if you know that something happens next. Do you have lily procs that will grant powerful and free healing spells? Yes, so everything's fine. No? Ok, I have to adjust and use medica too when the damage is mediocre and nothing follows right after it or if a sequence of damage is happening, maybe cure 3 would be the more useful option. 
And guess what, even if your brain will process these thoughts much faster than the spoken word, it will definitely take some GCDs that can easily be used for continuing with glare otherwise. And for I guess 90% will encounter damage cause yourself to heal up after it, just from the fact alone that white mages would not be able to use proper shields and still all fights this game has to offer have been completed with each healer combo. So there's absolutely no need to rush things over, far from it. Most of the times thinking about the pixel perfect solution to the mechanic or threat happening will lead to the best performance and results in a happy and healthy party, featuring the hero, you as a healer. So while these ideas are mostly the usual mistakes and misconceptions people have, especially newcomers, stick to the basics, deal damage whenever you can and heal whenever needed, with a slight focus on the latter. Make use of your cooldowns and if you have checked all of these boxes, nobody should ever blame you for your performance, because it may easily be their own fault. You're not the only person responsible for a healthy tank, a full HP damage dealer or the boss kneeling down before the power of your party. And to turn this game around, let me close this video highlighting the many benefits of choosing a healing role or job that can make the life of you and people around you much more enjoyable and taking up the healer responsibility will pay out in no time. First of all, instant duty finder cues and being able to provide security to your tank in dungeons. Not only tanks are designed to crush dungeons when they have proper knowledge of their job, healers can easily set the pace for dungeons as well, mostly due to backing up the tank with confidence to be in good hands and that you're always ready to pull everything possible. And if you think this is a task too hard to accomplish, don't worry, it will feel super natural after a while and some pulls that always seem to be impossible may become the most easy and super enjoyable task if you and your tank use their kit efficiently. For example, a proper use of the Blackest Knight and Holy into a whole bunch of enemies will easily not demand healing at all, or at least the healing with Lily spells that the White Mage want to use anyways. And yet, my biggest reason would definitely lead us to something like always being able to control events happening to your party. As healer, you are the decisive factor to victory and demise of your party. Not in a very demanding way, but in a I decide who lives and who dies way. So people should actually be very courteous in the healer's presence instead of blaming them. And when you ever face someone blaming you, even if you have given your best effort to fulfill your role's duty, just do whatever feeds the blood lily. Above that, for all further info about getting started as a healer, or if you still don't know with which healer you should start, check out the many videos found in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, hop in with any job you like and see you around in the next dungeon, raid or any other form of content. Until then, take care, take care of your party and keep loving Final Fantasy.